All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, how are you doing? Back for episode 21, 21 of our solo RPG stream. So, a little bit different in the background, kind of moving some stuff around, hoping to get some, some more artwork up and things done so that way I maybe I can give you guys a different view at some point or when I'm doing videos. Just kind of swapping some stuff around in the office. So things are a little bit in flux. So that's why background looks a little bit different. But let's go ahead and sort of get started. We're running a little bit behind. Had some something that sort of pulled me away at the last minute. So let's go. Let's uh, let's do a quick recap, huh? Let's talk about the uh, what we did last time, where we're at, and what we're going to try to do this time. All right. Um, let's see. So last time we picked up. Uh, we had just done the fight in sort of the sort of entrance hall, grain, main hall sort of area, great hall area. And then everything was on fire. Rhinefire was outside the keep, you know, being, being a nuisance to the guards. And we, uh, Leah and the rest of the party ran upstairs. And in doing that, we ran to the audience chamber, the sort of formal audience chamber. Uh, ended up finding... Some steeders up there, munching on some some dead guards, which is not what we were expecting. We kind of set off a jury-rigged alarm trap, but uh, everybody was kind of already... There's already so much commotion going on that it really didn't add to anything other than telling the steeders we were there. They, uh... We kind of, kind of noped out of that situation a little bit, and... Ran downstairs and then downstairs again, just trying to get away from the steeders. Going from the audience chamber down to sort of the area we were in before. We fought some more steeders and guards. And then down again to a heptagram, so seven, seven prong star shaped room. Which is a very strange thing. And that's where we found the tapestry. With uh, the rival noble. That's where he had sort of disappeared off to. He uh, very quickly sort of messed up Ott, who's our sort of primary warrior, and things were looking pretty bad. But uh, things things kind of took a surprising turn, this time in our favor, which is not usually how it's been going, but this time in our favor, as a, a Nothic that had sort of been in this ruined mage tower, making his home, jumped on the rival noble as he was trying to make off with this magic item, which it wanted very much. In the end, uh, ended up killing the Nothic, ended up killing the Noble, and we recovered the tapestry. And then we fled into the night from the Ruined Tower, our mission accomplished. We also learned in that interaction that... As far as... Or we confirmed that... The Noble, the rival Noble did not have Volley. Nida's heir. So we didn't have to worry about having to go rescue him. So that's good. We ended up journeying back to the Unicorn Spring to rest, and everybody was dog tired at that point in the middle of the night, probably in the wee hours of the morning. And the Unicorn wasn't there, but we were able to rest up. And we were able to sort of identify what's kind of going on with the tapestry. And the tapestry has basically a an aura effect that kind of works like gentle repose so basically it it uh preserves dead bodies and makes ensures that they don't turn into undead and that's what we learned is sort of like an heirloom of naida's family and walking back to the noble's manor leah convinced the group surprisingly convinced the group even though they really weren't into it to clear out the arcane sinkhole uh the the sovereign wrecked Ott in one shot. Ott did not have a very good adventure in the Ruined Keep and uh, in the Arcane Sinkhole. She has really just gotten her butt kicked the last few sessions and probably tired of them, but she got crit real bad. Uh, but it happens. We found some minor treasures, nothing that really made going down there worth it. <laughs> Unfortunately. 
and then kind of went back. Now, one of the things that we did find is we did find a note for some directions to something. We haven't really determined what that is, so I think that we're going to determine that. But before we jump right into that, I'm going to put that on our... And put that quickly on sort of our things for the session goals real quick. Stuff that we need to take care of. Sorry, like I said, I didn't update this because I'm kind of running behind. So just doing some updates real quick. All right. So what do we? What are our goals for today's session? Or what do we want to accomplish in this session? I think we want to. We obviously want to keep knowing about what Dot knows about Leah's connection and what her part in it and if she can give us any information hopefully now it's time for some answers i think ot's going to have answers for us or something between between the help of ot carol as the book and dell we should be able to piece together some sort of information about something that's uh about what's going on so we can sort of like figure out any information because so far in now this 21st session that we've played at this, we have no clue about the people who discredited the research and what that had to do with anything. So it's time for us to figure that out. And then uh, I think this is a pretty, this could be a pretty simple session because that's primarily the thing we want to think about is, okay, what's going on and then where do we go from here? And then, like I said, I said at the end of last time, I think we're just going to level up and I think that's probably what we're going to spend the time doing. So it's going to be kind of a low-key session, unless something gets really, really weird. I think that's all that's really going to happen. Or that's all I'm planning to have happen this time. We can offload some treasure, perhaps, as well. But let's go ahead and... Oh, speaking of, I need to actually open our characters' sheets. Alright, who else we got here? Oh, right, I forgot. I can't do recent because I've opened a bunch of PDFs since then. <laughs> so we need Elg, we need Elmer, we need Ott. Get Ott first. And we'll get Delg, and then we'll get Elmer, because I don't think Elmer's really going to bring anything to this. I don't think any of these people are really going to bring a whole lot to this conversation. Besides maybe Delg and Ott. But I don't think Elmer's going to bring anything, and then anything... Certainly Naid is not going to. Though we do expect that Naid is going to put us up for the night, and I think she's probably made that clear. So we'll go ahead and jump into that. I think so. Obviously, if you guys have any questions or, you know, you have problems with the audio or anything like that, just let me know. We could kind of adjust that as we're going on. But let's go ahead and get started here. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. There we go. Let's clean this stuff up real quick. Done and done, and then I will get you over to what I'm looking at. Be helpful. I don't think we'll need any of the main books up, but just in case. Alright, here we go. So yeah, this is what we're looking at. Uh, so we make it we make it back. We had made it all the way back, so we are all the way back at the gate at this point. I don't know why I have secret notes there. I don't need secret notes there. We have actual notes there. I'm not sure why that's there. So anyways, we have returned to this keep in the little hills. So we've climbed up into the hills. We're resting there at Naida's place. Ott is going to get paid. So let's go ahead and deal with that first. So we sort of, the group finally shows up. It's probably, I can't even remember what time we got back. I guess I can probably estimate from looking at our notes. Let's, uh... Oh yeah, so... Only progression of five, so it's still probably pretty early in the morning. Or morning, maybe approaching noon at this point. So we sort of return to the, to the manor house and everything gets situated and everybody's happy to see us and all that good stuff and brought us in. Now, Ott has a contract, but I I have a feeling that we are also going to get uh, 
some payment as well for specifically Leah. And we'll assume that the others do as well. But let's go ahead and give her a little little charisma check. And I think it still makes sense for Leah to do this. So she's got some she's got a group of people with her, so I'm gonna go ahead and give her the advantage on it. She has a plus two to the roll. They sort of angle. Oh, those are good rolls. 21. What's the DC? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's a DC of, what, uh, 7? Yeah. So, yeah, very, very, very well. Um, what I think I'm going to let that do is I think I'm going to... Let's do some minor treasure. I think that's what she's going to pay. Or no, wait, we, we, uh, we actually... We also have a contract with her, right? I am getting ahead of myself, because I'm pretty sure we actually set something up, didn't we? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just noble and recovering the lost treasure. So it was 9 gold in gold ore, plus 2. Uh, so then we had, I believe it's 4 days. So we're going to get 16 in gold, and then 9 gold in gold ore. So let's go ahead and and we have completed this. So I'll go ahead and add the 16 gold down here. That would be 52, 62. Perfect. And then I will add the 9 gold in gold ore. We'll put that up with our other treasure notes. So obviously we're probably not going to be able to sell stuff here. Uh, there's not really... There's not really a place to kind of do that. Because there aren't enough people in this setting. So this setting has... Uh, 26 people in it, which means that has a buying power, trade power, about 2 gold and 6 silver. So that's about the max of something we can get paid for something. Uh, but there is some of the stuff we could probably sell off. Like, we can probably sell off the stone idol and the medicine, the enamel pin. Alright, so well, obviously we don't have the magical tapestry anymore. Gentle repose, let's take it away. And let's uh, let's transfer some of the the hard currency that we have here over to our character sheet, so we can get that sort of taken care of first. All right, so we got ten gold here. So let's take care of that. Actually, we're doing we're we're not doing too bad on money. Uh, and five and four, which makes that twelve. Knock that out. The perfume bottle that's worth about a gold. It's 70 or 7 silver. So we could knock this out. Uh Dread Fruit, we didn't we didn't actually come up with a price for that, did we? Uh let's I guess let's roll a price for it. Real quick, let's see. I was going to say it was going to be kind of negligible, but we don't know that. We don't know actually how much we picked up, so unless we roll it. So let's go ahead and roll it. Alright, so I need a D 2d20 basically will tell me. Alright, uh, 14 on the first one, that's pretty okay. So that's silver pieces. Oh. Right? Oh no, sorry, it's uh, 14. I gotta do this in the right order. Should be 1d50 of... Oh, and I rolled a 20. <laughs> 1d20 of platinum pieces. Or 1d50 of platinum. Whoa, really? Alright, this must be very expensive fruit. It must be incredibly exotic-like fruit. Wow. Alright, so that's going to give us 25, because... We're only doing 1d50. 25 platinum and dried fruit. 
Well, I'm glad that we rolled. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, we certainly can't <laughs> sell that here. Uh, and then we have another force over here. Let's do that. Knock this out. And like I said, we have some sort of negligible things we can get rid of. So let me... Let's just uh, kind of add these all together. Everything that we can kind of sell at this point. Alright, so we got 0.02. And that's 0.04. It'll be basically this and this. And uh, for the enamel pin. Oh, the brass button. Oh, we didn't do any for the jerky. Oh, that's why. That's why. Because it was pocket contents. So we should roll on the pocket contents. So the dried fruit is not going to be that amount of money. <laughs> Which makes way more sense. Um, because I didn't roll on the pocket contents. Let's roll on the pocket contents instead. That'll... That'll help us a lot. That'll make way more sense. Now, this is kind of a two-part roll. Let's d6 first. Oh, we rolled a five. It's still going to be pretty pricey, though. Alright, so uh, it's actually worth 13 gold instead. Which is still, for dried fruit, is very impressive. And also still means we can't sell that here. And let's do the same for the jerky. Because we didn't do that for the jerky either. Two. Alright, so this is 1d10 silver and 8 silver. Okay. No problem. 8 silver. So that means that we can add that 8 silver probably into this stack here. Uh, which puts us at what? 80 plus another 80. I'm trying to do math. 1.68, right? Can't sell that, but we could... Eh, uh, probably can't get away. Well, yeah, individually. Sure, we can sell the, uh, perfume bottle as well. For another gold. Because all these are separate, right? We That's kind of what we look at. So, it's not a lot of money, but it is some. How much does a knife cost? I don't even know if that's in here. Under a regular adventuring equipment. Oh, I guess it is a... It's a minor thing. These are all sort of pocket content stuff, so we should roll on pocket contents. Alright, uh... Oop, another D10 silver pieces. Oh, five silver pieces for the knife. Oh, 3.1. This is just a shorthand. Uh, Alright, we have a wax tablet and handkerchief as well. Ah, uh, close stupid thing. Taking care of getting the treasure. Get the treasure. Oh, good. It's worth practically nothing. Yep, tin, tin copper. So we got 10 copper, and okay, so we got 15 coppers worth for the handkerchief and the wax tablet. Which puts us at 3.33. Alright, and then we can take care of this. Uh, the papers as part of the rub. I don't think we need those papers for anything. And I hesitate to call them actually treasure. At this point. Other than, I mean, we learned what they were. Right, that was the whole point. And then we have, we have this note with directions. We don't know what that's to, though. So we need to figure that out. Uh, but let's go ahead and transfer that 3.33 over. Five. 
five, and five. Wow, interesting. <laughs> Here's how that works out. Yeah, so I think we we kind of take the day. There's probably a lot of sleep that goes on, and then kind of talking, doing some shopping, and selling th some things. Is there? I guess we we have some moments to sit down. So I think Leah's sitting down in her bed while everybody's sort of resting in their room, staying at the manor house. Kind of looks at the note with directions. So now it's going to be time for some oracle questions. Like, do we know? All right. First off, can we read the note? I think that's likely. Yeah. Okay. So we can read the note. Uh, do we know the place it's talking about? I think that's 50-50. Yes, we know exactly the place it's talking about. Okay. All right. Uh, just just because it's the first roll, we're off to a good start. Let's see if there what sort of edge that's going to give us, if anything. Remember, we still have that inspiration point. Hmm, news of a different plot thread setback. Hmm, I'm trying to think of what that would be. I guess we'll, let's look at our adventure threads. So, some, but it should be something that's in our favor. So it's directions to some place that maybe would be a setback. Or something that would be helpful for us. Well, we've got 11 here, so let's just roll a d12. Let's see if that makes sense. Seven. All right, what's what's our seventh thread? The enmity of Norkruth. All right, so something... So Norkruth has had some sort of setback. Let's try to figure out what that is real quick. And this talks about, or maybe gives us an opportunity to really deal a blow to Norcruth in some way. I mean, we've we've kind of bagged on that guy enough. I'm not sure that we really need to bag on him anymore. So, just say something, something that, uh, four. Extraordinary creature. I mean, that sounds like Ryan Fire. That's what the whole thing's about, right? Why we're sort of in a problem with him. Either that or the Myrmidon, or maybe something else. It could be something else, too. And five, uh, create, releases, or use. Now, if we remember that thread, Norkruth was trying to sell Rhymefire to a ghast, and we still don't know really anything about that. But I'm guessing that this is... So this is this is going to be some sort of setback for him. Is it the idea? Do they have literally no idea where Rhymefire is? Let's ask if that's. Is it, does it make it clear from here that they have absolutely no idea where Rhymefire is? No. Okay. So that's not it. So, all right. So they they're still searching for Rhymefire. Let's leave. Let's assume maybe that. Um, I, I mean, the big question is, is like, did the, I guess the, the question that kind of jumps to my mind is, did the ghast get Norcruth? Is that what this is telling us? Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Um, or Norcruth is... So Norcruth is maybe being summoned. Maybe this is summons. Maybe that makes more sense. So we, when I was thinking directions, I was thinking, you know, geographical directions. But it could be directions as in, like, this is some, like an order. Like, you are being... Like, the thing that we found is that he was being summoned to appear before the ghast. Okay. So, and does that, and I guess in as part of that... Does it also tell us where the ghast is? I think that's kind of likely, right? Plus three? 
Yeah, okay. So yeah, let's add that in. That's that's a really cool one. So we don't really know anything about that, but we do know that turn off bold. He was there's let's put it here that we intercepted order two nor cruise to appear before the guest for his failures. He really hasn't had very good luck in, in the game overall. Uh, so the guest revenge. And so uh, intercepted directions Give the location of the gas layer. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. So, the question is, is kind of looking at the map, do we know, do we know where the gas layer is? Like, as in, like, we know the area that it's in? Maybe? I don't... I think I'm just going to leave that 50-50, because I have a feeling that it would probably make sense to be in Karjuntan, right? Because that's where we came across it, that's got all the undead in the city and all that weird stuff, and that's where we ran Norkruth, Rhymefire, and so it makes sense, I think, for the lair to be in there. But I don't know that for sure. Because we were waiting on the gas to arrive, which doesn't seem like something we would need to do if the gas was already in the city. So I'm just going to leave it 50-50. Uh, are we, or at least for this first question, do are we familiar with like sort of the geographic location? Is it a place we know of? No. Alright, so it's not a place. So it's not Carjunton. That just tells us right off the bat. Okay. Um, is it someplace like nearby that we can get to with relative ease i think that's likely considering you had to travel no not only no but heck no so if it's not anywhere nearby then that means that the the guest had to get there through probably none non-mundane means so potentially through magical means so so maybe the question is is that is it sending Norcruth to like maybe some sort of like teleporter or something like that that's going to take him actually to the gas layer to his Spot for him to be picked up at the gas and be taken to the gas layer. Given everything we've learned so far, I think that's highly likely. So plus five. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. So not only that, it it's got to be. Is there perhaps? I think with a natural twenty, I think that means that there is bundled in with these instructions. There's got to be. Maybe it takes you to a cache that has a teleport, a permanent teleport circle in it? That would be really interesting. So, we're not familiar with the Final Destination, but we are familiar. It's going to take some sort of a teleporter circle that's... Permanent teleport circle that's going to take us there. And so I'm just going to put it over here. So it's far away. All right, so the question, so my question is, is that or must use must use teleport to to get there to get close, which is really cool. That could be something we definitely address in in the campaign at some point that allows us to move to a different area much much easier to maybe you know deal with some other stuff other than sort of like this area we kind of have the campaign in so far. So that could be a lot of fun. I'm really into that. 
So, the, I think my question is, is that... With the directions, with everything that we got, with the note and everything, the orders... Is this, is this something that we can access now? Right? Or do we have to find a wizard who can teleport and it basically gives us, like, the literal XY coordinates of how to get to a place that's close to it? No. Okay. So it's basically given us XY coordinates. So we must... Use teleport. Does it teleport to... So it must teleport to sort of like... To... I'm gonna say a specific landmark. Okay, so that's definitely something that maybe we can check out later and when we run into another higher powered wizard or somebody like that and a, a more capable magic user that maybe we can get into or something we do later on in the campaign. That's really cool. I didn't think that that was going to go that way, but hey, you know, that's the that's the joy of the, the random roll tables and all that stuff. That's a real cool thing we ran into. I am very happy with that. Mm. Well, we certainly can't do anything with the Myrmidon plate. Well, actually, while we've got her here, I think it's worth asking, you know, since we recovered a tapestry that is, has some basically radiant divine magic tied to it, maybe we should ask if Naida knows somebody, or has, knows of somebody, you know, from that sort of area that can deal with the corrupted water Myrmidon, can, can actually basically uncorrupt that plate. So yeah, we'll, we'll ask her that as we're sort of, you know, having lunch or whatever. I think that's just 50-50. Okay, now she doesn't know anybody. I didn't think she would, but there's always a shot. Remember, yeah, you miss all the shots you don't take, so might as well ask the question. Alright, well that's uh, that's everything we need for the Elven, Elven Lombo, uh, Akari's family heirloom. We're not going to do anything with that, obviously. We can't sell off that dried fruit. It's worth too much money. Get off the gold ore. Uh, there's nothing really, I think, that we need to buy. And I think we did... Yeah, we did rolls last time. Because I remember that we need to do rolls for... Ah, too. So we got our play. So, Alright, so let's go back up to our session goals. Alright. Uh, oh. Let's, uh, let's review our... Before we get too far into stuff, and... Let's review those adventure threads, because I've really been neglectful about that. Alright, we still got the enmity of the Bounty Hunter Guild. Nothing new there. Research the Corrupted Water Morbidon Plate. Eh. We don't really have anything. We don't know who wanted to hurt Harold yet or why. We're going to hopefully try to figure that out. And wrote the one to Leah. And uh, did I put one down here specifically? So I'm just going to add this down here. Oh yeah, we haven't done any of the cipher clue. Is that a day? Has Omer worked on that at all? Let's ask, because Omer hasn't been really doing any action. But I still think it's unlikely he would have, so minus three. Oh, okay, so he did. Okay. So, let's see. He was definitely by himself. And this is just sort of like an intelligence thing. I would probably go ahead and give him... Yeah, because he has the linguist feet to create so, ciphers. But he needs to do, I think, it just a D12 intelligence check? Or maybe an investigation check? Uh, so basically he needs to roll a tenant better. Let's go. Natural 20. Yes! Uh, so that's 22. I think he... Does that mean he cracks a cipher? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alright, so he has... Let's 
It's all starting to fall into place. So I think we'll deal with that here in a second. After we deal with some of the other stuff. Uh, ooh. She did sleep. There was a bunch of fire there. So I think it's likely that she had some nightmares about sort of her previous things. I think that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to give her like, a little save here. A wisdom save for Leah. Oh, it's not very good, unfortunately. That's a 15, because she gets a plus one. To balance out her... From her minus one. Alright, so maybe, maybe. Yeah, alright, so she was successful. Alright. So we'll go ahead and add that here, so... So, 31.95, so she's kind of living through it, but she experienced this and it went... All things considered, I mean, a bunch of her allies got hurt, but not because of the fire or anything she did, right? Though she did definitely light some people on fire. Um, but yeah, I think at this point she's just becoming more inured to it. It's starting to... That trauma's... That old trauma's starting to mix with current things, and I think that the... Not necessarily that the impact of it is lessened... It's just that, you know, that that first trauma is somewhat softened if you keep having the same trauma over and over again, right? The impact of that one event is lessened. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean she's in a better headspace, but um, because her waking time is also filled with some similar sort of experiences at this point, the nightmares aren't as... Don't have as much impact on her. Uh, so she's making her way there. Slowly. Uh, we don't know anything about the undead in cartoon today. We haven't done anything with that. Uh, we don't know anything about Slaver's Affliction. And I don't think that they would talk to Naida about that. That doesn't make any sense. We're not dealing with any of that. Emity of Norcruth. The Ghast. We didn't come across any undead. So that doesn't make sense. And as far as we know, nobody's chasing them for their hijinks at Riverside Conservatory. And it's been it's been mm, some days now. It's been like what a week and a half, maybe two weeks since they've left. And we don't have more permanent. Right fire. Okay, so I think we're, we're opened up. We're we're doing well there. I think we've got everything down that we need to. And then let's just. Um, but yeah, we uh we did that, we've gotten everything. So I think the one of the big question is is uh, I don't know if we want to broach the subject of Rhyme Fire at the estate. I don't think so. I think we're just gonna let him hang around and do his his own thing. Alright, so now we have we've had some time, they've had a day of rest. Let's go let's go ahead and, and move the clock forward a little bit. So they had their full day of rest. Let's go back up here to the top. So it is Souls Day. All right, time to get down the brass tacks. Everybody's sitting around. We've had some stuff. We've had that. We've gone to gone to temple on Sunday. We've. Uh, We've done our praying, we've come back, we've had a, a nice lunch, I feel like. And then I think it's time, once Naida sort of excuses herself to kind of do her usual family business, along with uh, Volley, that they're sort of left to their own devices, and I think it's time to talk to Ott, right? Well, let's uh, let's answer some of these questions, Ott. So, uh, Ott. I've learned now that you are involved with Delg and with Harold and Arias and why didn't you say anything about it to me? Did you did you not know like my connection to it all? And then let's do uh I was gonna say let's do an inside check. It's like uh 
let's just say. So does did Ott know about Lee's connection to this whole plot? No. Now the question is, is do we believe her? And I don't think anybody can help her on this insight check. So and she kind of sucks at him. So she has a minus one. So that's a twelve. But the DC is pretty low though. Yeah. All right. So we did succeed. All right. So we believe so. So Ott did not know about Lee's connection. All right, so how are Ott and Harold and Arias and Delg connected? So we know that Delg said that Ott was his contact. So I think we learned that, right, that was the only communication he had. He didn't really have any direct communication with Harold. So I think they were kind of using Ott and Delg as sort of like this, you know, third party intermediary just to make things a little bit com more convoluted for people who were trying to fire them and then, you know, money kind of showed up. So, and I think we've, we've already done the inside on Delg. We were pretty sure that he was telling the truth about that. So we kind of want to know Ott's part in this. So, did Ott deal directly with Harold? Or I, I should say, deal directly with Arias. No, not at all. She doesn't even, she doesn't even know who Arias is. Or at least that's what she tells us. Do we believe her? It's inside like that. Alright, a 15. Yeah, we're gonna make that, alright. All right, uh, we believe uh, doesn't know who Arias is. Okay, that's a pretty big reveal. So if it's not Arias, it's got to be Harold, right? So then you know you knew Harold directly. You know but he's a gnome, right? Or was a gnome? Yeah. Okay. And so he obviously hired you to take care of some things. So what sort of things did you take care of? Uh, I think the most clear one is that obviously she does some she did some messaging. Right? Yeah, alright, so she did some messaging. Did she ever scout anybody or follow anybody? Is that one of her things? Yes. All right. Did she ever guide anybody? No. All right. Do we believe her when she says no? That's very low, DC. I mean, it's it's possible we could fail it, but probably no. All right. So we we're unsure. We don't we don't know. She told us no, but we're not sure. We're not sure how we feel about it. So we know uh, knew Harold directly. And and for him, she uh, let's see, we should deliver messages. She scouted people slash places. And she did not did 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 not guide people unsure so we're gonna say here that it failed insight so we're still kind of on the fence about that like we are like oh I don't I don't know if she's telling the truth or not and Ott in general is kind of a hard person to read right I mean she doesn't have normal like human sort of facial structure and sort of those sort of tails that we're used to seeing because she, you know, she has a muzzle and her lips work differently. So it's probably more difficult to tell kind of when she's lying or when she's telling the truth. I feel like she's the sort of person who, when she tells a joke, you're not sure if she's telling a joke or not. 
Right, because she has such a probably deadpan delivery of it. Hmm. Okay. Does she... So she's got to know something about the people... Can she... Let's ask this. Can she identify the faction? Or group? Because we assume this is more than one person at this point. It's got to be, right? There's, there's so many people doing so many things. It's got to be more than one person, right? I mean, that just makes sense. Right? I mean, it's gotta make sense. So, I guess the question is, is does she know the faction that's behind all this? Describing the research and everything. Yes. Okay. Now, what kind of faction is it? I guess is the real question. And that is not a straightforward thing that we can ask. Really through from through most general oracles, so I'm gonna actually going to or at least not through my oracle, one of, but I do have I do have some others adjective sort of based ones that she that maybe can give us a little bit of insight. Yeah. All right. I guess the first question is: Is that is it a faction that we are already aware of? Yes, whoa. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> Alright, let's look at our factions. So she's going to spill the tea on us. So Ott knows them, and so do we. Right. Factions and NPCs. Alright. Uh, Noble's bodyguard. Those will, those could probably. I'm gonna leave them there for this roll, but those will probably go away. <laughs> and I may want to confirm that even if I do roll an eight. But we've got eight here, and it's a faction we already know about. Two. What's our second faction? The Riverside Conservatory itself. It goes all the way to the top. Ooh. Oh, I forgot that we have Iolas with us. <laughs> right, Iol and also Iolas is here. Okay, so it's Riverside Conservatory. Um, is it one of these people... Is it one of these four sort of major factions that we have? Already. Yes. What? No, oh, no. I feel like it's got to be another discredited sage, right? It's got to be one of the other people. I th I feel like that makes the most sense. Because Omer's at the table. Harold's dead. He died for this. Arias, maybe, but probably not. So is it one of the other discredited sages? I'm gonna say that's highly likely. Plus five. Yeah. Okay. So one of the others is it? Is it Aeolus? He was a grad student, though. I think that's highly unlikely. Yeah, it's not Aeolus. All right. All right. But it is interesting. So it's another one of the discredited researchers on our team. It's connected. So. So that's the person that Ott knows for sure. Uh, I'm assuming that Ott probably doesn't know them by name. Probably. But probably starts describing them and then Leia kind of goes, wait. And then kind of looks at Omer. Who's like, wait. And then kind of looks at Iolus and he's like, wait. 
Uh, so we do know who this person is. Interesting. Uh, just for simplicity, I'm going to pull out one of our handy dandy people from back here with our drop in NPCs. We'll just use one of these people real fast. I kind of want to use Mikael, but let's see. So, this person that we know is called Fargrim. So I'll just read the description from Fargrim real quick. Uh, a tall and rather thin dwarf, Fargrim's most defining feature is his clean-shaven face. It's pleasant to speak with, though quiet, thoughtful, and approaches issues from a logical perspective. Kind of a loner. And if it wasn't obvious from his shave, shaved face, uh, he is not one who caves easily to social pressures and cultural norms. So if Argrim was influenced by somebody, who then, then he took that information to the conservatory, the conservatory got to the, got to him. Alright, so Ott knows them and so do we. It's corruption within the conservatory. So, we know that she delivered mission and she scouted people in places. Was one of the people she was following Fargrim? Like, does she know the location of where Fargrim's at? Or at least a last known location. Uh, I think that's somewhat likely. I feel I feel like that's something Harold would hire somebody to keep an eye on. So plus three. Yeah, she definitely does. Okay. All right. So we know that. Uh, knows a last known location for Vargrim. So let's look at our map. Uh, so this isn't the only map we have, but let's go ahead and open this up a little bit. So could be in Split Valley, could be here, could be in Carjunton, could be somewhere else. So let's let's go with Carjunton first. Is this, is Fargrim last known location Carjunton? Maybe. Yes, yes, but, or sorry, the, technically it's an interrupted scene. So yes, last known. Uh, and so we have sort of an interrupted scene here. Let's let's figure out what that's going to be real quick because we haven't had one of those in a minute. So let's go ahead and roll them up. Ten. Some sort of extraordinary information. Steal or take. Well, what, inf what extraordinary information will we steal or take from this? Unless somebody... The only one that I can think of real quickly is that someone would swipe her spell book, because I think that's the only thing honest that is... Yeah, just kind of. So somebody, somebody steals. Hmm. Like I'm not against it. I just kind of don't want to run down that rabbit hole right in the middle of something. So my thought is, is that. So how else would that screw up things? Yeah, you know we haven't done a chase scene in a while, so let's go ahead and do a chase scene, right? Somebody, so they're sitting around, you know, probably still at the table afterwards. One of the servants, you know, are cleaning up things. And then who's gonna who's gonna notice that this is missing? I, I mean, I guess Leah, or maybe Ignace, like ah, the book. I think they're gonna jump up, and you know, we have a, a servant or what looks like a servant clutching the book 
run out the back kitchen door, out to the back of the estate on their way out. Uh, so yeah, let's do a uh... let's do chase. That seems like fun. We haven't done one in a chase in a, in a while. I don't think we've done one since uh, we messed with the water marmadon. Actually, uh, let's just make it a short one. Somebody grabs her book and takes a run. All right, so that's three successes before one failure. Uh, we're just gonna have Le and Leah and Ott. I don't think Delg or Delg or Iolas or any of those others are particularly athletic enough that they would even really be in the running. But Leah and Ott, so they're gonna run off. I assume this person also has a thirty speed, probably. So everything should be just straightforward as far as that goes. So what is the first thing? So this person takes off. They're running out the back door. They're chasing right after him. And what's the DC and the first thing we're going to run into? Okay, the first DC, pretty easy. It's 11 DC. And no com Okay, no complication. So it's just straight up constitution check. So they're just running at this point. So got to be an 11 for Leah. Come on, Leah. I mean, we can't lose the spell, but <laughs> we're a wizard. We're absolutely worthless if we lose the spell book. I think I gotta spend the inspiration on it. Because I don't think we can trust Ott to run after him. I mean, that's great. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, we haven't used this inspiration, so, yet. Let's see, this is good enough time as I need to use it, so let's, we're just gonna use it. Come on, roll better than that. 14, thank you. Alright. So, in the running. Ott. So, needs to beat that 11. A. So, Ott is on it. Ott just takes off, leaps over the table, takes off after it. You know, it has that, has those long, dull legs, it's just running. You know, used to sort of running across open ground. No problem. So I'm going to count that as two successes. So we only need three successes for whoever's going to get there first. And so she's going to have two successes. All right. Uh, any complications this time? Nope. So it's just straight up running. All right. DC 14. Leah. All right. Leah, do you have anything to cast? She could maybe cast Grease. Yeah. Leah's going to cast Grease. On that person instead of taking the action do it and force them to sort of make a deck save which they're gonna fail all right so they they hit the ground prone and she's sort of like greases out the ground in front of them they just whoop, 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 like slip out and you know ass over tea kettle fall on the ground uh, and hopefully you can get the book in the grease hey it's a magical book it'll be all right uh, and then Ott's gonna make a run. Uh, Ott's not gonna get there quite yet, that, or is also slipping, I should say, is also slipping in the grease. So the two of them are sort of slipping in the grease, trying to run up to it. Uh, let's see. Here's our third one here, so that's technically a failure, so. Leah's at two successes, and Ott's at two successes, but at one failure apiece. Oh, yeah, the DC for this is real low. It's DC 9. All right. Uh, Leo, yeah, I mean, she's... She's there, she just needs to grab him. Which she fails to do. Come on, Ot. Your time to shine. This is your thing. Grab him. Yes, thank you. Wasn't a hard DC, right? <laughs> All right, is able to grab them. Sort of tackles them in the grease, and I think the book goes skidding out of the grease, and <laughs> Leah kind of picks up and is like, mm. grabs them and pulls them to the feet. Uh, is this somebody we know? I think that's extremely unlikely. <laughs> and, and yet, it seems to be somebody we do know. So I reserve the right to change that, <laughs> just because I should have thought about that more before I said that. Oh, it could be the peddler to the nobility. 
I do like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, uh... Get a few different people here. Let's, let's just roll. Five different factions. Who's our five faction? Oh, family and friends. Uh, yeah, no, there's five here, so let's roll d6 and see what comes up. Five. <laughs> it's rhyme fire. <laughs> that wouldn't make sense. Uh, I don't think that makes sense. So let's just, uh... Mm. Yeah, I think we're gonna move that on. I, I'm like, I'm gonna X out the noble's bodyguard after this, after this event like session so i think it's one of the nobles bodyguards right some of the people that we found in and like this is the their like last gasp for like trying to you know get some sort of win out of the terrible situation that's been the last couple of days so i think that makes more sense they just infiltrated and grabbed the book and tried to make a run for it hoping that i don't know maybe they could trade it for the with the tapestry, or who knows what they were trying to do. We've got them. Uh, is there any reason why... And I'm just going to ask the Oracle. Is there any reason, either from from the character themselves, that we've just kind of grappled, or from our end, is there any reason we can think of why we should not just turn this person over to Naida and just kind of wipe our hands with this? No. <laughs> That's pretty firm, no. Alright. Well, a little action, I guess. Uh, luckily the book's fine. I guess, since she's got the book in her hand, she's gonna open it up. Does Harold have any additional insights about Fargrim, some of this sort of stream of consciousness? Uh... I was thinking, should I have made that a... Given a plus to that. And I was thinking about it, and I should have talked about that before rolling. But I didn't, so that's no. Alright, so we open it up, and he's just noodling on about something, as, as he does. And he's just kind of... Again, it's the whole thing is like very stream of consciousness. So he's talking about something probably around the grease spell, or grease, or maybe cooking breakfast, or the smell of <laughs> food, or... Who knows what? Lamp oil. Now, remember, I need to remind myself to buy lamp oil because I'm almost out in the office. And <laughs> right, because Harold's kind of lost it maybe a little bit, and now that he's sort of eternal afterlife inner monologuing through this book, she's like, huh. Well, that was a thing. Yeah, sometimes it uh, gets a little weird. <laughs> we do. When we let the intrusive events happen. Uh, let's go ahead and... Put that on some... Uh, and... Let's say Disguised... Lord... Grabs Leah's... Book... But is captured... Before... They can escape. Alright, and then we'll kind of turn them over and let's see in that. Alright, so the last known location that we have for Fargrim is Karjuntan. So I think that tells us where we need to go. Which is really exactly what I wanted to do with this session. And... Just going. And so I think our session start next time will be... Traveling back to Karjuntan. We've got to... We'll do that. So I need to take some of this stuff. Let's take this stuff and let's put that in the recap notes. And make sure that we have our session goals for next time. So we're gonna, uh, we can talk about the decoded cipher. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that a little bit. We'll see if that gives us, I guess maybe we should ask if that has any bearing on 
the information we just learned about, but I do want to record our session goals for next time, and then we'll, like I said, we'll probably do the level up, and I think that'll, that'll be the next place, best place, and then I can do the sidekicks and stuff off screen. We don't need to stick around for that, but we can do Leah's level up, and that'll be fun. Uh, because it's level 3, and... Eh, actually, that's not that big for wizards, is it? That's alright, we'll do it anyways. Uh, so session goals for next time, we have to... Uh, let's say travel back. Tarjuntan. And we need to search Tarjuntan. For Fargrim. Uh, I guess we need to. The thing we need to also. I think we need to convince Ott to probably come with us. Uh, I guess that's kind of a sub goal of travel back to Cartridge. Because it is really, like, following people and doing that sort of stuff and getting the information and scouting things is really more her bag than anybody else's. Uh, at which point we, we might be able, we might at this point offload some NPCs. Uh, we need to determine what to do with some NPCs. We'll just put that here. Because I think I feel like this will be a very natural break for some other people, like Omer. I feel like Oriolis, Delg. I feel like wherever Omer goes, Omer and Aeolus are probably going to stick together. It doesn't seem like they got a lot going on because Aeolus sort of completed what he was doing, and so I think. Omer is kind of not doing anything right now. And then we got to figure out what Delg's going to do. I don't know if Delg's going to go back to normal life. I don't know if that's a good idea. Maybe we can talk about that more next time. Yes, now we know that the people who... Now he's going to be implicated with because he's been talking with Leah and Ott and... Omer and all this. He's fully pulled in now, so... It may not be super safe for him to return. But also, he's not super useful in the adventure. I mean, I guess he does have... He is a healer, right? Even though we haven't really used him that way. Uh, he is a healer. He just isn't very good in combat, but none of them are. Except for Ott. Uh, for Fargrim Trail. I'm just going to rewrite that. Trail. A little easier to read. Uh, is there anything else? Oh, we need to we need to talk about the cipher, right? We learned more crew. Let's see. We intercepted. More Intercepted. Okay, so we have the cipher from Harold, and so I think the first question I want to ask is, is it related to any of the new information that we just now learned or already established information about, you know, the, the people who discredited them? Yes, okay. So the other question I want to know, and this is kind of a big one, is, is it... The location is it information that will lead us to the location of their actual research no okay so it's some sort of inform other information so let's roll this uh since i've got this since i've got the chart out let's do the d100 chart 67 open Open masses. So open something to the masses? I'm not quite sure what that would mean. We're going to open something to the masses. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm not sure. It's this, I mean, the only thing they can think of that would be open to the masses would be maybe like the slaver's affliction or the sort of undead problem that's in Karjuntin. So is it the slaver's affliction? Yeah, okay. So it is tied in with us. Interesting. So we you kind of Herald Cipher that is tied to well tied to somebody to tied to all right is it riverside conservatory or is it like is it riverside conservatory or is it specifically the all right so it's not riverside conservatory so it must be specifically fargrim or is it fargrim no so then it must be one of Fargrim's connections. Connections. And we have that. So plans to infect the masses. Infect, let's say, in, infect the public. Now, what do we know about Slaver's Affliction? Uh, we know it's rampant illness with Slaver Stock. We know that it doesn't cause the undead in Karjuntin. And we know that it's not trans transmitted through amorous activity, whether that's kissing or sexual transmission or anything. Chris did not see Delg about Slaver's Affliction. I don't even remember why we have that. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. So, but we do have that, that it is... One of Far Grimm's associates. There. Plans to infect... So does it tell us the, if that's the plan in the deciphered code, does it tell us the method of transmission? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Is it airborne? Yes. Okay. So it's airborne. Oh, we, we have, is it related? Yes, but only it's a comorbidity. It's not, it doesn't cause it. So we know it doesn't cause the undead in Karjuntin. But people who do have slaver's affliction often end up becoming undead. Interesting. Uh, it is... This can be like coughing, sneezing, that sort of thing. Uh, so it probably makes sense to probably release that in like a market or a bathhouse or someplace like that. Maybe a theater. Thing of that nature. Some enclosed area with a lot of people kind of packed in together. Oh. I'm putting that in the wrong thing. So it's transmitted by here. <sighs> hmm, but we don't know why. Or what that has to do with us. But clearly those things are related in some way. So I guess the final question that I have about that is 
is somebody named in this coded cipher? Like, do we have who it was supposed to go to? No. All right, well, okay, so we don't, I should have rephrased that question. We don't know who it is, but is it actually like signed? Like, does it have like a name? Yes, okay, so it does have a name. That's, those were two separate questions. I worded the question poorly. All right, so it does have a name. All right, let's think of, um, let's go up here. I'm just gonna put that up here. So, so it is, um, I just lost the, the word. Uh, when you pin something to somebody, it's there too, then you know, can't think of the word. So it, there is addressed. So it, and that's, you know, we don't know this person. Or we don't know who this is. So it could be a code name, it could be, I guess, is it, is it a code name? I think that's probably highly likely, <laughs> extremely likely even. Yeah, all right. So it is some sort of code name. Uh, yeah, let's think of a, it would be, you know, I'm just gonna roll on the NPC table because I think the, like that makes the most sense. It's sort of a cool name, like a Tinker or something like that, 49. I said Tinker and then I literally rolled Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> and what else do we have? Ooh, no, I like that one instead. Uh, so I went from the NPC table to there's also D100 shops and market stalls. And 49 there is investor or insurer. So let's say it's addressed to the bank, or let's say the mint. So maybe some sort of money backer. We'll say that's a code name. I mean, we don't know who that is. And nobody at this table knows who it is. We're talking. Uh, let's, let's ask Naida. I think that's extremely unlikely. So minus five, but yeah, you know, she's here. She has some different, she has, yeah, she doesn't have any clue. All right. All right, well, that gives us definitely things that we know to do next time. We're going to travel back to Karjuntan. We're going to try to convince Ott to come with us. We're going to try to pick up the Fargrim's trail in Karjuntan. we got to determine what to do with our other NPCs. Actually, this probably need to do that before we get to Karjuntan. So I'll just swap those around real quick. And then we also need to pick up any leads on, oh, we also need to delve, delve, and run fire. Any leads on the bank. On the bank and the Slaver's Affliction. Infection plot. We do we try and find Norkruth? This may be something that we send Delg after and on his own, because I mean he's got more healing knowledge than everybody else put together. So he'll he'll be the person who's probably more likely to be able to find out information about that. Uh, and try and try and find Norcruth, and maybe we can uh, also also missive. We might be able to play that off as like, hey, the gas that did this for you did not seem happy. Uh, so that would be kind of fun. All right, well, we got a lot to do for sure.
This is the step in the next thing. So, but that does mean that we're going to bring this one to a close, which means we're going to spend kind of some of our remainder time here doing a, doing a little level up, I think. I think... I mean, technically it changed this, but... Eh, do I really say that? Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and save it. Because we're not going to need that anymore. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to take a quick break, a quick little bio break, then we'll jump back in and we'll do Leah's level up. So I will see you guys in just a minute, alright? Bye! Alright, let's get back to it. Ooh! Right. Yeah. Like I said, I just moved this, and then, I don't know, this little, little sliver here is kind of bugging me. <laughs> I'll adjust that, hopefully, before next time, but whatever. So, uh, keep on. So, we have kind of finished everything out, so we're just going to take it easy. Just, we can just, uh, you know, do some normal chatting, hang out. Just gonna update Leah, give her a little, for a little, um, upgrade. Let's go ahead and do that. So, Leah is now a level 3 wizard. Harry. You're a wizard, Leah. You are a wizard. And you are a scribe's wizard. Yes. Ooh, cantrip formulas. Alright, so we're gonna get some, uh... We're gonna get another first level spell. We're gonna reset all these. So that's nice. We're just gonna get some uh, second level spells now. So that's new and different for us, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Certainly getting us into the place where we can actually, you know, maybe get something done. Alright, cantrip formulas. You have a scribed set of arcane formulas in your spellbook that you can use to formulate a cantrip in your mind. Whenever you finish a long rest and consult those formulas in your spellbook, you can replace one wizard cantrip you know with another cantrip from the wizard list. Okay, cool. Uh, so I guess it doesn't matter, so we can just hot swap cantrips. I don't know if she'll do that right now. Uh... Yeah, right. So we need wizard spells of the cantrip. Variety. I mean, there are a bunch of them, but I picked ones that are pretty versatile already. Yeah, Firebolt, Frostbite, Mold Earth, Breast Digitation. I mean, Mold Earth. It's either really useful or not really useful, depending on where you are, right? So I guess in some of those cir circumstances, like, I would maybe look at swapping it out. But especially while we're doing overland travel, yeah, there's really no reason to. But we'll go ahead and note it. So we can swap out. Right, because we have the extra cantrip, because we're a yeah, special elf. So we have cantrip formulas. And that's really uh, big thing we get, huh? I guess we get a spell. And uh, let's look at our what we got going on for level two. Hmm. 
Flaming Sphere is a pretty, pretty good one. It's just concentration though. Any thoughts about what I should take? Uh, I am a friend, quite a big uh, fiend when it comes to the suggestion. I have a sorcerer that makes, really, a, frankly, just abuses the crap out of it. Because, um, yeah, it's it's an eight-hour spell, guys. It's like, I don't know why this isn't on, like, everybody's favorite spell list. Because Suggestion is, like, a game-breaker. Especially if you're doing it outside of combat. As an outside of combat spell, that you can just suggest a course of action. And, right, you're limited to a sentence or two, but you can... You can make it really stupid. You could be like, hey, I want you to dig a hole for eight hours. Okay. <laughs> Must be worded in such a manner as to make the course factions sound reasonable. The only thing that you have to worry about is creatures that are immune to charm. But it's super great for just people. Right? <laughs> And, and the thing is, is that the suggestion, you have to give them a, a limited course of action, right? But it doesn't say that you have to be very specific. It's not like genie wish rules, right? You can give them a vague course of action. It doesn't even have to be something that, unlike most charm spells, that... You have to word so they don't hurt themselves. Oh wait, yes. It obviously harmful. Sorry about that. Nope, that is correct. I was like, I was missing it. It's, I thought I just missed that somewhere. So, yeah, I mean, this is a great spell. I don't know if it makes sense for Leah's character, but it's a spell that I really like. Because it's sort of a, a stealth great option. And you can really sort of like screw a bunch of stuff up if you just cast the right side type of suggestion because again you can be super vague with the wording like you could say something like So you can't ask them to do an obviously harmful act, but you can ask them to do something like we used it. My sorcerer used it on an assassin, and it was basically like, "Help me infiltrate to the best to the best of your abilities. Help me infiltrate your base, like your organization's base." So he's like, "Yeah, you know, you hit the, there's a bunch of traps. Here's some people to watch out for." <laughs> Now here's how you get into it, here's where the secret entrance is, there's a bunch of entrances. <laughs> right? So you can be relatively vague with it now. So, but like any sort of charm or illusion thing, it really is dependent up to your DM as to how much they're going to let you get away with that. So I, I try not to abuse it too badly. I hate things like, like that when they're worded that way. Like you can... You can teleport them to any place as long as there's water or ground under them. Cool. Like, it really kind of takes the teeth out of it. It's like, man, if you're going to let somebody take Vortex Warp and you're going to put a fight... Like, if you're going to have a fight with a bad guy next to a cliff... Right. Then the expectation is going to be, I'm going to find some way to get this person... Get my enemy off the cliff. <laughs> So I don't have to fight them anymore. I, I don't necessarily like a lot of the backtracking. The sort of like it feels very schoolyard. Like no, oh, you you can't do that because because that would be easy. 
because that would be smart play. And there's, I find like there's quite a bit of that in 5e, in the in the spells that I don't really like, where the people complain about you know combat being boring and stuff like that because a part of that issue I find is that the rules make it very clear that oftentimes they don't want you to have clever play with it. It'd be nice. If, you know, frankly, she might take magic weapon to put on Ott's weapon. Since Ott has multi-attack, she might actually do that. How much does level 2 spell scroll cost, anyways? It's level 2... Uh, it's uncommon to one use, so... It's the rarity of it. Because we, we are making her sort of like copy down things. She just hasn't come across a lot. She certainly can't buy one here, but she could buy one maybe when she got back to Cartoon if she has enough money. Uh, so that is a single use uncommon. I know, we definitely don't have enough money for that. That costs way too much. And we don't have anything that we could sell. So. I mean, I guess we could sell the magic teapot, but we're not going to do that, because it's nice, because it's from her mother. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter at this point, right? We don't actually have to pick a spell. Or did we do that? Did we do that for her second level level up? I can't even remember. No, we must have, right? Because otherwise there's no way she'd have that many spells at this point. We must have done that. Alright, so we'll give her a spell. We'll give her a spell. Yeah, we'll just give her a magic weapon. And I'm happy with that. I uh, and that, I mean that's about them. Uh, do we want to roll for it or take half? I don't I don't feel like really because we need to do our HP. That's really the only thing we have left. We definitely rolled last time, but we rolled well. So we're ahead of the curve, right? No, because it would be six, seven, eight, eight plus six is fourteen. So no, we just took straight up half. Right. So uh, four, five, six. So another six. She has twenty hit points. Tough being a wizard, man. Tough being a wizard. Go ahead and save her. Oh, right. I'll deal with that later. Eh, I forgot. But that's all screwed up with the, with the save system with this file, and I have no clue why. <laughs> so I need to redo it. But that is fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, the level 3 level up is super easy for wizards. In the spell, we got Cantor Formula, which is... Woo! I mean, it's nice, right? But I mean, it's not game shifting in any ways. Really just not a lot going on for third level. I mean, you get second level spells. That's really the, the key thing. You get second level spells. We got our second level spell. Right? Or is magic, magic weapon at first level? No, magic weapon's a second level spell, right? Yeah, we're only like two. Because we don't have any magic weapons at this point, and we're going to struggle to find those. But otherwise, we're doing we're doing pretty well. Now, one thing we didn't do is I think we're gonna we're gonna rest, obviously, into the day, which I think puts us into the next month, right? Can't remember my own calendar off the top of my head. 
Yeah, we're gonna push push into Spring Crown at the beginning. Uh, is there any sort of celebration for that? One. I gotta say that's no. But let me double check. I know I've gone over this in uh, in the video or kind of walked through everything that's in the, my DM Swinder. But I do have a like 1d20 what's happening in town sort of thing. Oh, it's a, it's a d12. I need to roll a d12. Then it's a d20. Come on, 12. No, alright. So nothing was going on. If there had been something going on, there would have been traveling acrobat circus or players. It showed up. But no, it just kind of, it passes. So we, it passes on to the next month. And I need to update this. Uh, like April 19th. And that's the day we'll be heading off. So we'll just go ahead and update this. Smart of me to do a bunch of weathers in a row, so I didn't have to I'll have to stop and pull that up every time. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. Accidentally. Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, that's pretty much it, man. There's not a lot going on. This. Um, I guess... No, because I gotta do the saving and everything. I'll, I'll do the rest of it later. So this is kind of a shorter session. Hopefully, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I, I feel all right with it. We got a bunch of accomplished, but we kind of knew that this one was kind of going in was going to be very much sort of an info session. We're trying to find stuff out, so there wasn't going to be a lot of action going on. We had our little little chase that was something, but... Oh, there is one thing. I wanted to ask uh, Naida if she knew... Does she know some maybe location for Rhyme Fire to stay at? Right, because we're still trying to rehome Rhymefire, trying to find a safe place for him to sort of make a den. Yes, okay. Uh, no, I already closed it. Uh, is it the Broken Mage Tower? I don't think so. So minus three. Yeah, all right. Uh, so I'll just put that here. I'll just put that, um... So before we do that, we'll do... To give us... To... A potential... Let's say, layer for... Potential, uh, let's say, safe... Layer... For... Right fire. Because she knows that the... Dragon's on her side. I mean, we probably would have talked about it on the way back. We didn't do it in session, but I mean, when you saw your the people you're with not freak out when a dragon attacks a place, you go, oh, they must know the dragon. <laughs> All right, well, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Uh, let's see. Other stuff we need to talk about. I'm working on a blog. Got the video script I'm working on. Trying to maybe kind of break into doing maybe, maybe some YouTube sort of scripted videos. Maybe do some of that. I don't know if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. Uh, but I figured, I had something to talk about, so I figured it'd be easier just to make a scripted video of it. It'll probably, the format's probably gonna be a lot like this anyways, just got the talking head thing. But, you know, it'll be fun. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if that ends up doing well, maybe we'll do some more. If it doesn't end up doing well, you know, maybe we'll do more of the live stream stuff. I am still working on the maps, working on the blog, and working on that video and then yeah just, um, I have a bunch of projects going on I should say I have a bunch of stuff going on uh, other stuff I'm not sure that I want to talk about yet but hopefully you guys enjoyed this you can of course find out more information about some of the other stuff I do redregafine.com you want to support this you know make sure to follow you can subscribe to the YouTube channel at Red Dragon Fiend over on YouTube you can share all this on social media, your favorite RPG forum, Reddit, etc. You know, kind of get the word out there. Or you can support me by buying some of the PDFs that I have. If you want to throw us a couple dollars, 
over on drive through rpg you can go find it again everything's under red ragged bean or support me directly through coffee ko-fi.com you can become a follower for as little as a dollar and just do it that way and that helps the support and all that money ends up going back into this so not <laughs> taking extravagant vacations by any stretch of the imagination but uh, this was a lot of fun hope you guys had a bunch of fun as well and as far as I know, well, uh, my schedule looks relatively open for the coming month. I know it's we're closing on the holidays, and that kind of gets a little weird. But as far as I know, things I don't have anything that's going to interrupt that, at least at this point. Uh, if I have any other updates, I'll let you guys know as, as far. Uh, until then, I'll see you guys next time. All right, guys? Bye.